It's Thursday, July 17th, and our area of possible tropical development out here, which could possibly turn into Tropical Storm Dexter, is looking less and less likely to form by the hour. Don't be fooled by this large area of convection out here. The actual center of our storm is going to be basically due south of the Pensacola area near Alabama and Florida. And we can see that just not a lot of organization is occurring. And this is basically 24 hours out of when it would start to make a possible landfall in the Mississippi River Delta. And it just doesn't look like it's gonna have enough time to do it. And the ingredients out here are also not gonna be super favorable. Here are our European model ensembles, and we can see here a pretty large downtrend in the intensity with most of the ensembles having it making landfall in the Mississippi River Delta as just a mere tropical depression with a couple still showing that possibility of a tropical storm intensification, although I pretty much doubt that at that point, and I don't think that's super likely. And one of the reasons is because the trend has been that it will push a little bit more south out here into the Gulf, which would possibly allow it to re-intensify. But currently, the storm has defied that model trend and has stayed further north and has continued to interact with the land pretty much the entire way. Now, because there is a high pressure system up here that will likely dip down into the path of the storm or right above the path of the storm, I do think we could actually possibly see a bit of a southward shift, which would possibly put it out in the Gulf and to allow it to re-intensify in those very warm sea surface temperatures. So that is one of the reasons why there is still about a 40 to 30 percent chance of a tropical storm forming, but I just don't think it's super likely. And like I mentioned, the 30 to 40 percent chance of forming, that is the official probability that the National Hurricane Center has given it into forming into possibly tropical storm Dexter. And something to know is that they have not increased the probability over the past two days. So definitely a downtrend in the confidence of this tropical system possibly forming into tropical storm Dexter. Now it is still true that our sea surface temperatures are going to be super warm, which would normally be conducive for some development. And our ocean heat content isn't really going to be poor by any means up here in the area, which we could possibly see it develop as well. But the main crux for this storm is going to be the large amounts of wind shear today out here, which is going to be the most important period for it to possibly be able to form. But that high pressure system, which could actually steer it into land and slow it down and allow it to be in those warm sea surface temperatures for a while. We need a bit more organization will actually also bring quite a bit of wind shear, which when these storms are weak like this, they cannot really survive large amounts of wind shear like this. So overall, I think potentially Tropical Storm Dexter will be sheared apart into just a rainmaker. And something else to note is that the moisture near the center of our storm is actually going to be a little less. This has been downtrending day by day. And this was one of the things that we were seeing, which was going to be OK and would possibly allow it to organize more. But now that this is bad, the environment out here for organization is looking less and less favorable. So I would be extremely surprised to see Tropical Storm Dexter form, even though there is still that low probability. I just don't really see it happening at all. Now, one thing to note is that our largest area of moisture is actually going to be in the south southwestern area of our storm. And that is where we're going to see most of our activity in rainfall. And starting as early as Thursday morning, Louisiana could start to get absolutely covered, specifically the Louisiana boot could get absolutely drenched with some areas. This would be by Friday morning, the total amounts of rainfall. And we see widespread areas of anywhere between three to four inches with a couple of isolated areas even receiving about seven inches of rain. So the main threat with the storm, it looks like, is going to be Quite a bit of rain and possibly some flash flooding down here in the Louisiana boot. Now for a severe weather threat, we have two main areas to look at. Our main risk area is going to be out here, stretching all the way from the Southern Plains through the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys into the Mid-Atlantic and then into the Northeast. And there's going to be a very clearly defined corridor right here. Then we have another risk area up here in the far Northern Plains and parts of Montana and Western North Dakota. Other areas to look at would be in our High Plains Convergence Zone in even back here a little bit into parts of Utah and Nevada, where there is going to be a high pressure system spinning, which could bring some organizing shear to a couple of storm clusters back there, possibly making them severe. Now, today, the main risk with our severe storms is going to be the conditional threat of some damaging winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. And pretty much anywhere in these 5% risk, both of them are areas where there is the possibility of a couple of gusts possibly eclipsing 60 miles an hour. And our hail threat is going to be combined to our northern plains area up here in parts of Montana and western North Dakota. I do actually think some large hail would be possible. So although this is a 5%, I do think this could be upgraded to at least a 50% chance of some hail. And I do think hail 
greater than one and a half inches in diameter could possibly be in play. And the last thing to know is a fairly conditional tornado risk up here for a couple of weeks spin up tornadoes in northeastern New York and pretty much the entire state of Vermont. So we'll talk about why that is a little bit in the future. And then once again, we are going to have a couple of areas to look at which could have a elevated flash flood risk. There's been a lot of rain across the U.S. this past week. One area is going to be out here. I think it's going to be a pretty conditional risk back in the northeastern corner of New Mexico and into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle where I think anywhere between two to three inches of rain could be possible in this risk area. I think our main risk area is going to be this area which stretches all the way from the central plains into the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys where there will be widespread anywhere between one to three inches of rain and a couple of areas, some isolated areas, possibly even receiving five inches of rain. And then we are going to see a decently large rain risk back here where our tropical system will be, where we already talked about that. There could be some rain in some isolated areas, possibly even being around seven inches in total accumulation and then widespread around three to four inches. Then we do have a couple of marginal risks, one up here in the Northeast, one which stretches back all the way into Florida, then another one which stretches back into the desert Southwest. And pretty much with all these marginal risks, there's the conditional threat for widespread one to two inches of rain accumulation. Here's a better look at some of our rainfall risks areas starting Thursday morning there could be some quite a bit of rain back here in that northeastern New Mexico Texas and Oklahoma panhandle where we could see a couple of blotches possibly even receiving upwards of four inches of rain but widespread one to three inches and then back in the afternoon they will get a break in the midday but back in the afternoon we could see some more pretty strong rainfall in which the area could once again receive an area anywhere between two to three inches with some isolated areas receiving five. And then back in our river valleys, we're going to see just widespread areas of two to three inches of rain with some isolated areas possibly even being around five inches. And then for our temperatures across the country today, we're going to see a cool down continue up here into the parts of the northern Midwest in the northern and central plains with pretty average temperatures down here in the southern plains, although they're still going to be quite toasty at anywhere between the high 80s to mid 90s. We're also going to see some above average temperatures out here on the eastern coast, specifically the southeast and stretching up into the northeast, possibly being anywhere between the low to mid 90s with our northeast possibly reaching anywhere between the low to high 80s. And then back here in the Pacific Northwest and just west in general, pretty much anywhere west of the Rockies, we could see another pretty high temperature day with a lot of above average temperatures. For example, up here in parts of Washington, we could see a high temperature of possibly around 95. And then here is our simulated reflectivity from what I think is the most interesting risk area today, other than our area of tropical development. And that is going to be up here in the Northeast in parts of Northeastern New York, stretching all the way up into Maine. And we can see that right before midday, we could possibly start to see some organized storms in front of a mesoscale convective vortex or just general low pressure system pushing eastward. And then this is also going to be helped by some troughing and frontal activity. And we could see an area of increased shear, which could possibly bring the conditional threat for a couple of spin up tornadoes with these storms, which would pass through the region in the early to mid afternoon hours. But it looks like our storm mode is going to be fairly messy and there's just going to be a lot of convection out here. So it looks like the main threat with this would be some damaging winds possibly, and that tornado threat would be very conditional. And then these storms would be gone by around the evening hours. And then the last thing to mention would be the possibility of some hail, possibly around a inch in diameter, because there is going to be a lot of organizing shear and possibly strong updrafts with a couple of these storms. Our second most interesting area to me is going to be up here in parts of northern Montana, where we could see a couple of discrete, pretty organized storms starting around the early to mid afternoon up near the US Canada border. And something to note with these is that the threat of large hail will be possible and possibly the threat of some isolated severe gusts. Now, I think the tornado threat up here is going to be very low because these are mostly going to be some elevated high base storms. And it looks like these are going to be helped to initiate by a vorticity maximum by an area which could see some troughing and then some frontal activity up here as well. And then these storms would eventually push eastward and turn into some clusters, bringing some damaging winds to the region. Moving back out east, we're once again looking at our mid-Atlantic risk area, which has received quite a bit of storms in the past couple of days. And right out here, I do think there is the conditional threat 
First, some severe gust with a cluster of storms pushing east southeastward along some frontal activity and possibly maybe even a embedded low pressure system. And the same thing goes for a cluster of storms back up here near our Mississippi and Ohio river valleys. Although I do think we could possibly see some stronger clusters out here associated with some frontal boundaries, a low pressure system back here, then a stationary boundary, which kind of drapes a bit southward before it starts to drape northward with our storms in the mid Atlantic. And with these storms, I do think interacting with these boundaries and some troughing could lead to some stronger storms, but the main threats with these would be some damaging gust. The last area which looks interesting to me is going to be out here in the desert southwest than our high plains convergence zone. So around the mid afternoon, we could see some isolated severe gust along our high plains convergence zone. And then back here in the desert southwest or just desert west in general, I do think there is going to be the pretty conditional threat for a couple of storm clusters bringing some damaging winds back in the mid to late afternoon hours. And something interesting that the HRR is picking up in on particular is a stronger cluster of storms down here, which will push down into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle from northeastern New Mexico. This is actually one of the things which is expected to bring that flash flooding threat to the region. And the main threat with this would be some damaging gust possibly in excess of 65 miles an hour. Here are our 500 millibar winds, and we're gonna want to look for a couple of short waves pushing through. Now up here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic, we're gonna see a fairly large trough pushing through the region, which is gonna help to bring some organizing shear and some large scale forcing for a lot of our storms up here. And then back down here in our Northern Plains risk area, we will see another area of some westerly flow, which could help to bring some storms together up there as well. And then we'll also see some ripples in our jet stream down here near our main risk area, which stretches from the Southern Plains through our river valleys, then back into the Mid-Atlantic, which could also possibly bring some forcing for those storms down there as well. Now here is a weather sounding from what I think is our most interesting risk area up here in the Northeast. We can see that our hodograph is gonna be very curved and our shear is going to be very favorable at around 20 knots of low level shear and 130 low level holisty. Then our bulk shear is even gonna be nearing that 40 knot threshold. So definitely the possibility of a couple of organized storms, which could pose a tornado threat. Our lowest cloud level would absolutely be low enough for a tornado threat to be possible. And our low level lapse rates are gonna be pretty solid, which would possibly support that wind threat. And this is gonna be coupled with some drier aloft, which would further support that wind threat. And then a very moist environment, coupled with a pretty unstable environment at around 3000 joules per kilogram of Cape. So definitely favorable for severe weather. Our downdraft Cape is gonna be a thousand and our precipitable water is gonna be 1.54. And our three cape is going to be 140, which will also help to support that threat for some severe winds. Now, something else with a three cape is that I think it could also help to increase that tornado threat down here. And the last thing is because our organizing shear is going to be quite good, which means our updrafts could be strong. We also have a somewhat bit of cape near our freezing level and then our mid-level lapse rates are going to be above that six celsius decreasing per kilometer threshold although our freezing level is going to be quite high so that's one of the reasons why that health threat up here in the northeast is quite low but i definitely do think it's still possible to see some hail maybe around an inch in diameter but i think the main threat out here is going to be a threat of some damaging winds because it looks like our fairly decent tornado environment won't really be able to get used because of the messy and unorganized convection out here then here is a sounding from the mississippi and ohio river valleys we do have a bit of curvature in our low levels but our low level shear and holisty isn't going to be that great as well as our bulk shear is going to be somewhat poor but we do see some veering in our winds which could possibly help to organize some storms we have a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing level and then our mid-level lapse rates aren't going to be super bad at 6.1 celsius decreasing per kilometer which is above that 6 celsius decreasing per kilometer threshold we also do see some dry air loft which could possibly support that wind threat and then we have a very moist environment in a very unstable environment at around 3,500 joules per kilogram of Cape. So absolutely favorable for severe weather. We also have a precipital water of two inches, which could possibly support that threat of stronger downdrafts and some damaging winds, as well as possibly bringing that flooding threat to the region. Then our three Cape is going to be quite high at around 200. So also bringing that threat for some damaging winds. Now, I think the risk for hail out here is going to be super small. And I actually am going to say that 
I don't think there is a completely zero chance of some tornadoes as our lowest cloud level would also be able to support that tornado threat as it is low enough. But I do think that that threat for that is going to be still pretty small. And if there were any tornadoes, that would be weak, short lived and likely spin ups. Now, our last area that we're going to look at out here in the east is going to be from our mid-Atlantic risk area. It's going to be pretty much the same as our past couple of days. We have a very moist environment with a very unstable environment at around 4,000 capes, so absolutely conducive for some severe weather. Our precipital water is going to be high, which is one of the things that has brought that continuous flood threat to the region, and our three cape is going to be high at around 160. So all things that would support that threat of some possibly damaging winds out here in the mid-Atlantic. And the last weather sounding we're gonna take a peek at is gonna be from our Northern Plains risk area. And immediately we see a very elongated and straight hodograph. So possibly some storm splits up there and some storm interactions. We also see some wind veering with some very strong winds up in our upper levels. And that is gonna be mirrored down here in our bulk shear. Our bulk shear is gonna be 53, which is extremely high and is one of the reasons for that organized storm threat with possibly some large hail. Our cape up here isn't going to be super duper great, which is one of the things hindering that threat for large hail. It's only going to be around 1500 and our moisture will likely be fine for the region as it will be in the high 50s. Other things to note is not a super poor amount of three cape at around 80, so possibly feeling that threat for some isolated severe gust. We also see some interesting mixing with some dry air aloft, although it's not a lot. So another thing bringing some severe gusts, then our low level lapse rates are going to be pretty high as well. So another thing that would support that threat for some severe winds. We also see a BIF cape up here near our freezing level, which will also be coupled with 7.1 Celsius decreasing per kilometer lapse rates. And our freezing level is going to be quite low. So one of the other reasons why I think we could see some hail at around one and a half inches and then out here in the northern plains i also do think there could be the isolated threat for some severe gusts as well but really that tornado threat is going to be super small and i think it's going to be close to zero because these storms are likely just going to be elevated